Welcome back to JDM Legends presented by Turn 14 Distribution where today we refresh this engine including throwing some performance parts in it along the way. Well, that all came apart nice and easily. Factory service manual did help. And it's worth noting that these cam seals look basically brand new. It's kind of crazy how nice and fresh and flexible they st still are. As you'll recall from our initial walk around of this car, there was a sticker on the, the valve cover that showed the timing belt had, done, had been done at 92,000 kilometers. Was it around there, Pete? Yep. Um, so I'm assuming they probably did these at the same time. So they've probably not been in the car for very long. You can even see like the crank seal looks to be in remarkably good condition. I'm kind of tempted to say they did that as well. There's a like an O-ring under here that was leaking like a sieve on your 2JM3. Maybe we'll check that because it looks oh, like- Oh, we're gonna have to do that for sure, yeah. With some fluid around that guy. To do the valve stem seals, there are a bunch of tools that you're really gonna want to, uh, to have because it makes this job so much easier. The first one is a source of compressed air to hold the valves up. We are using our OTC cylinder leak down tester here. So all I'm gonna do is plug this in and pull off my bucket here. And next up here is a Lyle valve keeper and installer removal tool. This is a really an awesome tool. Let me show you how it works. So what I wanna do here is remove these keepers that are holding the spring and the retainer in place. And this tool goes on as such. And then with a bit of a bump and a push now, I should be able to pull it off just like that. And that's really remarkable because there's so many different uh, tools out there that you fiddle around with, but having this one makes the job super easy. And you can see the keepers are now in there. Next up here is this valve stem seal set of pliers. And you can see they're just shaped in, in a way that allows you to reach down in here, grab the valve stem and look at that. This one popped right off. And that's because it is destroyed because these are so brittle and old. The exhaust side on these is really bad. And here's an interesting thing to note. So you may not be able to see this, but part of the valve stem has stayed behind down here. So now I need a set of pliers to get in there and pull that off. If you don't pull that off, you try to put the new one on, you're gonna destroy it. So there it is. That is the piece of the valve stem steel that was remaining down there. And you can see if this gets left behind, it's gonna be bad news. Now, if you watched us work on our last 2JM3, you'll know that we use a ton of the GSC Power Division stuff, including their Viton uh, valve stem seals. These are actually cheaper than the OE replacement, and the Viton is a longer lasting material, and they're more readily available. So win, 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 and that means that they're gonna be pretty easy to install as well. I just push it on like that, and now I have a special tool to push it down as well. So here is another tool and really all it is is just like an open-ended socket almost for these valve stem seals. And all it does is just allow me to place it in properly and tap on this. You really wanna be gentle here. You don't wanna like hammer it down cause you can certainly wreck it that way. Now, of course, while we're in here, we are gonna make a bunch of upgrades, including a set of these GSC single cylindrical valve springs with tie retainers. And these are great for if you're gonna be running S1 or stage or S2 GSC cams, they're actually really good for daily drivers, they mentioned as well. And uh, anything under 32 PSI of boost, which makes sense. So we're definitely gonna be sticking below that. So I'm gonna pop these on as such, and now I'll show you how to get those keepers back on. Now what I'm gonna do is drop in the keepers like this. So here's the same tool I use to remove them, and it does have this little extension that drops in here. Now all I do is place that in the middle and come in with a hammer. We'll see if I can get this done in one go. Sometimes it takes a couple blows, but if you do it right the first time, it should just lock them in place. And 
Let's look. Bam, look at that. One hit wonder. And that, look at that. It's just in there. So as you can see, the job is done and I am just putting the crank back the top dead center because it will rotate on you when you put the compressed air in. And a couple quick pointers. All of the exhaust valve stem seals were burnt and rotten. Those are the ones that fail and the intake ones don't tear off like the, the, this side did. So just be very weary when you're doing these as I already mentioned to make sure to check for debris underneath. And otherwise, man, with the right tools, I'll, I'll, I'll say it, I'll beat the dead horse. Make sure you got the right tools because that job goes so much quicker than if you don't. And there you go. That is one sexy bump stick from GSE Power Division. This is their S1 profile. You can see this is for the intake cam right here. And these reportedly make between 40 and 70 wheel horsepower over the stock cams, just depending on you know how big a turbo you're running. But that is some serious gains and it is all gains with these. So there is no like low end power loss. These are just like gains across the power range. So there's really no downside to adding these. However, they do require that upgrade to the valve springs that we've installed here along with those retainers. So we should have a perfectly matched cam to uh, spring pressure and all that good stuff. So we've got the cams in, caps torqued spec. And by the way, we did put assembly lube on all the cam journals. So don't panic about that. We've got it all timed up to top dead center and uh, we are now going to follow the factory service manuals sequence for checking our valve clearances. We've got our little uh, shims here, or what are these called, feeler gauges, to uh, check our clearances. And it is worth noting that Power Division, GSE Power Division's clearances are on this card here. You can see it's seven to nine thou on the intake side and uh, 11 to 13 thou on the exhaust side. They've also got millimeters in there if you're metric, which is a slightly tighter tolerance on uh, the top and bottom ends in the factory service manual. So, We'll work to these, we'll check all our specs. So I'm gonna start with 10 thou, which is one thou thicker than GSC specs to see if it'll fit in or not. And that will not fit in. Ooh. And on this side, that will not fit in. So now we wanna see if the nine will fit. And if it does, then we'll know our clearance is nine thou, which is within GSC spec. So let's see how we do here. Oh yeah, nine is nice. It's got a little bit of drag on it. So that feels great. Nine on this one little bit of drag. So those are both in spec. That's a good start. Well, we just spent an hour of our life going through all this. This is our shim uh, measurements and all of our clearances. And guess what? We are perfectly within spec. We are on the loose end of GSE's spec, which I actually think is a good thing. Uh, so we're, we're done. I mean, it's amazing that we get to skip having to do any fussing with changing those shims up because that would be a whole bunch of work. So we've got our new seals up here. They just dropped in. And this one here though, we do want to replace just because I feel like it's already been replaced. It feels kind of soft, but we're going to do it. And normally what I would do is come in with a screwdriver and then you got to like pry it and you're worried you're going to damage something. So not recently, long ago, I purchased this tool waiting to use it. So this is another product from Lyle. What I'm going to do here is stuff the little leading edge of this tool, as you can see like that, underneath, there it is. So now it's underneath the seal and now I should be able to just use this as a pry tool, but I want to extend this out. Get some good leverage here and let's see. All right. Oh, but it went, look at that. That's amazing. I kind of figured it would, it would need one or two tries, but you can see there it is and it's popped out. Oh. Guys, let me tell you, having the proper tools is an amazing thing, but I know you could have a million tools, so that is the struggle. And I've just been collecting tools that we kind of like give me a lot of, you know, nerve wracking experiences. And this is one of them because really you never ever want to damage this or the crank. And as you saw, this tool did wonders for here. So I've got some lube on the inside of this. And really the trick here is to make sure that it's aligned straight. You can see if it doesn't go in straight, it's going to give you problems. And oh, I was going to use this, but <laughs> Hmm, I'm gonna have to rethink my strategy here. So I've got, I think a vibrant two inch or two and a quarter inch piece of pipe here that actually is perfect for this. And now I'm just gonna tap around and get this thing to set into place properly. 
After many attacks, I think we are good to go. It's as flush as I'm willing to go. I don't wanna go too far because then you can't come back out and I'm, I'm like confident this is gonna be good. So now we're gonna move on to this guy right here. If you guys recall the 2JM3, we had put the engine in, we did all the servicing and then we realized we had an oil leak and it turned out to be this guy here, which is there's like a, a weird O-ring on here. There's also like a spring and a bunch of other stuff. I don't really recall, this is like an oil pressure relief valve. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So it's kind of a, a weird thing, yep. And there it goes, there's that spring. And this is the O-ring in question. You can see this one is also very flat and very stiff. Can you guys guess which is the new one? Squish, squish. Not so squishy, look at that, oof. So it's actually probably a very good thing we decided to, to replace this because that was an oil leak waiting to happen. And now once I get this guy back on here and back in place, I think that is it for seals, which is pretty amazing of this engine. You've got the main uh, camshaft seals and then the crank one down there. And I think we are gonna be good. And, and this guy here, and that's it. So we can start putting the timing assembly together. And there we have our entire timing system done. Man, I love the 2J Ford simplicity. I'm just gonna rotate it around a bunch of times now to make sure it is in time. As you guys would have noticed, we are using a brand new uh, Gretti timing belt. I really like the Gretti stuff just because it's reinforced, it's gonna last longer. And of course it's blue. And honestly, it does smell nice. It really does. And of course we're using all OEM, ASIN water pump, NTN, tensioner and I think this is a, a NGK NSK NSK pulley so everything is OEM and ready to rock here with the front cover on and the whole timing system complete it is time to put on the crank pulley damper this is the OE damper here and it uses a rubber ring in here that you can see and it's quite prone to cracking and actually failing the, the outer uh, area can actually separate from it this one's in decent shape but there's really no reason to reuse it in our opinion because you can see it is starting to crack. And it's also worth mentioning that these are really only tuned to dampen vibrations at cruising speed, just to improve like overall NVH and you know sense of vibration from the engine when you're cruising. However, if you want a better damper, you go to Fluid Damper and these are made in New York, made in the USA, and they use a totally different technology rather than having rubber inside. It actually has an inertia ring inside of it that, that lives in a, a, uh, a chamber full of fluid. It's actually basically like a silicone fluid and that ring can rotate. And what that movement of the ring within the fluid allows it to do is to dampen torsional vibrations throughout the RPM range. So it's effective from one to 8,000 RPM, 9,000 RPM, it, it doesn't matter. The higher you rev the motor, the, this thing does the job of dampening out the, those vibrations. And what that does is not only reduce NVH, it also adds a lot of re reliability because torsional vibration is caused by the rods pushing down on the crank and the crank not only rotates, it actually twists. And that twisting and then releasing of the twist is what causes those torsional vibrations. And this damps those out incredibly well. So you're taking stress off the bearings, off the journals, you're adding reliability to your bottom end. So whenever you're building a, a high horsepower motor like this one, 
this is a very good upgrade to make for reliability. You're not reducing weight, you're not underdriving it, you're just adding reliability. And I mean, the 2J is legendary for it, but why not add this too? Because it's just gonna give us that peace of mind that we've got a very durable solution here that's going to dampen all those vibrations out of the system. Now it's time to drop the lower oil pan for reasons I'll explain in a moment, but first I should explain why the voiceover, and that's because the battery died on our microphone, or if you really wanna know the truth, Pete forgot to turn the mic on, but I would never say that publicly because I just wouldn't want to throw him under the bus like that. So anyway, oil pan leaking, not fun. We've fixed all these other seals, so why not drop this pan and replace that sealant? And to do that, you can destroy these pans pretty easily if you just jam a pry bar in there and really wail on it. So instead, using a little chisel and hammer action here, and as long as you're gentle and kind of work your way around, you will in fact win this battle and you'll get to flex your pipes a bit too. Check those guns out everyone. And there you go, pan is off. Watch that oil drip a little bit and then it's time to remove that old sealant from both the block side and of course from the pan. To remove that old sealant, I started off by trying a razor blade, which normally does a good job for this type of thing, but because there's a groove in the lip that the sealant sits down in, you really can't get into that groove with a blade. So not the right tool for the job. So next we decided to try a new favorite tool of Pete's called the Rolox wheel. And it is little plastic fingers, as you can see there. And those fingers eat away at the sealant and unfortunately also remove the paint underneath the sealant. So too aggressive a tool for this application. So instead decided to try the wire wheel. And uh, to Pete's credit, his it was his suggestion to try this out and it worked wonders. It clears off the sealant really well, including into that groove without removing the paint or at least removing very little paint. So I think this is the right tool for the job in this case. Time to move on to bolting this thing back on. Now it was time to offend the Toyota purists by using Honda Bond on the oil pan. And in our defense, Honda Bond is a really high quality sealant. It always does the job for us. So I'm confident with the pan in place, torque to spec, we will not have any leaks on this motor or at least not any oil pan leaks. Well guys, that is a wrap on this one. And man, am I ever pumped how good this thing is looking. It's so exciting to have all those potentially leaky seals replaced. These sexy GSC camshafts in place, this gritty timing belt in place, this fluid damper, damper in place. As a matter of fact, I should mention that you can get all of those parts from Turn 14 Distribution. So thank you very much, Turn 14, for making all of our JDM Legends dreams come true around here. And thank you guys again for watching. In the next one, you will see us put this beautiful beast back in the hole. Welcome back to JDM Legends, presented by Turn 14 Distribution, where today, I've forgotten what I was supposed to say. <laughs> where today, I can't come up with a transition there. We're fresh this engine, including, today we're gonna refresh this engine, including 